Hi there, my name is Giselle Grenier and I'm a mixed media and portrait artist living in Ontario, Canada. Welcome to my studio. Today you will learn how to create the two paintings shown on the screen. The art kit that you have includes a set of step-by-step -step instructions, but in this video you will have the opportunity to learn a variety of additional techniques to help you along. Now at the end of the video there will be some information on how you can access a large number of free tutorials and additional workshops on my website. So let's get started and move over to the painting table. I've got a photograph of what I used for an inspiration and I created two different variations of the design, both suitable for beginners. One's with a dark background, one's with a light background, and you'll notice that this one is a full shot. When I create uh, a design like this, I'll make it bigger than normal and then crop it down for framing. That way you're not um, fussing with getting stuff like this happening because if your paintings if your paper is too short you're going to end up with lines like this as the brush touches the end okay so i'm going to show you how to do both colored backgrounds it's up to you how you want to do that and uh we'll go from there so i transferred the line drawing to my paper and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some outlining now with this particular one here i had the graphite lines um I want the graphite line showing because we're going to be going back over them with a pink pencil. Okay, so I'm going to grab my pink pencil and you want your pencils to be sharp at all times. So I'm just going to go over every single line. And the effect for this particular painting or watercolor pencil drawing is something that uh, I like to refer to as it's, it's actually watercolor with we can call it with that with pen and ink and although we're not using pen and ink it's the I guess the best way to explain it is when you do a drawing or a painting and you outline with a permanent marker and for this particular thing we're we're using the outline of the graphite pencil I'm just going to outline everything. Now remember, this I'm going to be, this is going to be cropped after it's all done. So if I'm showing stuff on the outside, that's why. You can work at it cropped or the full size. I like making it bigger too because I can use knowing this isn't going to be visible in the frame because I'm going to cut the paper uh, to pr do some practice strokes. I'm using medium pressure I'm going to avoid rubbing my hand inside the drawing so I don't smudge anything. Now the watercolor pencils are water soluble so they have to, so this when, when finished this has to be framed behind glass. And this is a very simple, simple piece to do. I think I got everything. I make sure I have everything. Yep, that looks good. Okay, then I'm going to take the green and I'm going to use a light green pencil for this. I'm going to go over, whoops, pre press too hard, you'll break the pigment stick. And I'm just going to go over for the leaves. The leaves, you don't even have to, you can do, even do this free um, freehand. And I'm just going to put a little marker, a little line here, rain line. And let's take the yellow. And the yellow will just, we'll just create our our lines here and this again this you don't even have to transfer the graphite lines because we can do this freestyle there's a circle right there 
just to get it established. Okay, that takes care of that. Now we're gonna need to get our brush and some water. Now that we have everything outlined, I have a water bucket over here and I keep my water bucket as far away from my painting as possible so I don't accidentally make a mess on here. So now that we have everything outlined, we're gonna take the exact same pencils and we're going to color inside. And for the leaves, I'm working towards the center and working outwards, following the lines because this will help when we apply the water, it'll make it look like it's kind of veering out this way. And make sure you keep your pencil sharp. I can rotate my pencil to get a sharp edge. Like so. Same thing here. My pencil's dulling down a little bit, which is fine for doing what I'm doing here. I'm just using a little bit more pressure. See the difference? With a sharp pencil, with a dull pencil. You just have to make sure though, that you go right to the very edge. And same thing here. The papers, think of the paper with little hills and mountains. And if your pencil is sharp enough, it'll go inside the little valleys. If it's dull, the pencil's only gonna touch the little peaks in the paper, depending on how textured your paper is. that stroke is curved. Now watercolor pencils, you can use them as a colored pencil. You don't even have to wet them if you don't want to. And on top of that, if you create something with the watercolor pencil and you say, oh, I really like that the way it is, then you don't have to touch it. You don't always have to add water to it if you like the look of the dried pencil. And we're going to have to sharpen that after. And now we're going to do the petals. So I'm going to use the pink pencil. And I'm going to color in each leaf. Following the shape of the petal. And you're going to do this for every single one. The magic really happens when you add water. And just don't go over like this. Color in each petal individually. Rotating my pencil to get a bit of a sharper edge. And you can lighten some areas with the, the white pencil, but I'm gonna show you how to use the watercolor cakes for highlights, lightening an area, as well as adding little uh, dew drops in the lily and to do a little bit of correction. We're going to be using the watercolor cake for the side as well. So I'm just going to continue on doing this. And when we come back, we're going to add water to all the leaves. We're going to take our 
little brush, dip it in water. I'm going to have a paper towel handy. Just And all I'm doing before every stroke is I just t touch the brush into the paper towel just to grab any excess water. Okay, at the same time, if there's water on the ferrule, you probably can't see it. Make sure that you touch that too so you don't get water in the actual piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint each element one at a time. I'm just going to move my pencils over. I'm going to paint each element one at a time. So we can start off with, we can do the leaves, we can do the petals, doesn't really matter where you start. So I'm going to start on the outside here. And just apply some water. You can see that it dissolves the pigment. And it makes it flow really, really well together. Okay, pick up some more water, touch the brush. Now you may not see some of these elements in the actual written lesson. That's what I'm doing for the full, the full size. Now if you happen to put too much water down, just blot the brush in a paper towel and just go back over and you'll be able to lift some of that color up. Okay. It'll take a little bit of practice. And I would suggest practicing on some scrap paper or do this design a few times just until you get the feel of it. There we go. And sometimes, you know, just turn the paper around. And see, by creating the strokes in the proper direction, you can see where it creates some lines. Okay, rinse your pencil, pencil. Rinse your brush really well because if we mix the green with the pink, it's going to turn really yucky. So what we're going to do is we're going to avoid doing anything that's touching another color that's wet. Because once you wet the 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 element, if I happen to be doing the pink and the pink touched the wet green, it's going to seep. So the, the, the pigment just seeks out moisture. So I'll do all the other elements first. Now in between the two pieces, this one here I did much lighter, this one here I did much darker. If you want a darker finish, use more pressure on the pencil. If you want a lighter finish, which is what I sh what showed in the written lesson, use lighter pressure. The more pressure you put down with the pencil, the more intense, the more pigment you're putting down there on the paper. So I did this one. I'm not going to do this one. I'm not going to do this one because I don't want the pink blending into each other. So I'll work on a different area. Now that one has a little bit too much water. I'm going to blot my brush, come back in. Okay. And now we'll do this one here. We're going to do some correction work on this one. I'm going to show you how to, instead of using a white pencil, show you how to use the cakes to do some highlighting. And correction work. And this one here, you're gonna have to pick up a little bit of extra water. I'm not too concerned about the bottom because that's actually all cropped out. But if you like the full piece, like if you want your piece to be like this, and do the whole piece. It doesn't matter. And this design is so versatile. If you want your lily to be red, then make use a red pencil instead or orange. Okay. Now this one here I did touch side by side and I shouldn't have because it was wet. When you're going inside the yellow, just kind of use the tip of the brush just to push the pigment around. 
Okay, what's next? Um, that green is dry now, so I can work these ones here. And just be very careful when you're working to next to the green. So you don't accidentally push put any pigment, the pink pigment into the green leaves. Green and any type of red next to each other is beautiful. But when you mix gr green, any type of green and any type of pink together, it turns, or any type of red together, it turns into mud. A very dark, dull, dark. This one here, when I was creating, putting the pink in, I accidentally went over the, the green leaf. So a little bit of touch up there. Doesn't take long to dry. And we'll do this one. Just make sure you do them one at a time. That way you retain the shape. Because all that right now that's dividing everything is the graphite. I shouldn't have done this one because this one's wet. Let's see what happens. If so if it mixes together, then I can at least show you how to fix it. You didn't wear it like this one here. I didn't put very much pigment down, and it's very, very, very light. Same thing with this one. We can always, and I'm going to show you, we can always add more on top of this. Uh, this one. Now, I am going to veer off from the written lesson a little bit so I can show you more technique. There's only so much you can try to explain on a written lesson where the videos are very useful because I can actually show you. This one here, I added a lot more pigment. I used more pressure when I was drawing it in. You can see how much color is down there. Okay, what else have we got? Um, I'm gonna have to kind of tilt that to see. All you're doing is just distributing the pigment into all the pores of the paper. All right, just gonna go over a couple of pieces there. Rinse that and just kind of touch over the yellow. You see where some of the yellow touched into the pink, it turned orange. Make sure that each element is dry though. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and now we're going to, I'm gonna show you how to use the watercolor cakes to paint the water. We're gonna create the water and this is a good idea to have all this extra space so you can play with the color. I'm going to show you how to, with the watercolor cake, basically to get this type of blue and to get this type of blue just with a little bit of color mixing. So what I do when I get the little watercolor cakes, now I may not have the same ones that you have, but they're basically the same, is I take a big brush, fill it with water, and then I just drip the water. Or if you have an eyedropper, that works too. They need to be wet in order to be used. Okay. Just drip a little bit of water in there. And I do that usually before I start painting. Okay, 
I already have some ready to go. We're going to be using the blues. So how about I actually just turn this around? And in order to get started, I'm going to use a big brush just to, for speed. Just want to show you what happens. So I just wet the paper. Now when you take the paint, you put it in and it blooms out and it seeks out the water. Okay, so but when we spread it out, you can move it everywhere. If you were to take the pigment dry, put it on an area that hasn't been wet, the effect is completely different. Okay, where the watercolor effect, the water, the, the paper that's wet, it absorbs the pigment and it spreads it out a little bit easier. So you can see two completely different looks. So this here was with the paper, uh, the, the paint, the watercolor cake, the paint applied to dry paper, and this one was applied to wet paper. And that you just have to play so you can, so you get something that you, that you like. Now this one here, I can't really blend much more because the paper is dry, but this one here, I can keep going because the paper is wet. Okay. So for speed, I'm just going to go around very carefully. And if you happen to go into the leaf or a petal, if you happen to dampen an area you don't want to be dampened, then you need to let that area dry and start all over again because the paint, the watercolors, once we apply them, will just seek out the moisture. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you see that I use something called a masking film, and that's, think of it like MacTac for art. And you can use that as well to mask out an area that you don't want to get wet. But we're going to do it this way. Oops, I picked up a little bit of brown by mistake. My water must be very dirty. There we go. Okay. Then we're going to mix some colors. Now, if you want to mix that dark color, you just simply take the blue and a little bit of black. And that'll get that color like this. Okay. Just need a bit more blue in there. So there's that dark mix. So the dark blue and black, but if you want the light, light blue, it's just the blue by itself. Okay. So I'm just going to spread this around again. I'm, I'm using, oh, I just splashed. I'm using the big brush for speed. We won't be you, your brush will be a different size, but you've got more time. And if your paper dries out, just add, just add more water to it. I've got the studio lights on, which is drying everything very quickly, which is why I'm using a big brush. Be very careful. Now I accidentally touched the leaf here. That will be okay because we're going to be, we're going to be darkening the leaves anyways with green. Now I want my colors to be very variegated, very, and I want to see motion in there. I don't want a perfectly smooth finish. So I can come in and just touch additional color in some spots. Again, it, in the actual finished piece, this is all cropped out. You don't even see it, but just to show you the different effects. Now see all those lines that's actually going to dry out and show and then you get this type of effect 
If you want this type of effect, you just apply the paint. You can apply it dry. See, the paper is dried here and it goes on completely different. And I can pick up a little bit more black. That's a bit too much black. So if that's too much black, I'm going to go right under here. This is shadowed. Be very careful. We don't even see any of this in the painting. It's all cropped out. I just want to show you technique. Very careful. So it's going to take you a little bit longer using a smaller brush. I'm going to tilt this and now I want to show you something really neat. I'm going to take a little bit of water right here and you can tilt your paper to get some really neat effects. Now for this particular design, tilting the paper really isn't going to do anything. We're going to use that technique when we create the painting of the koi. But look at that. Anytime I paint water, I like doing that effect of dripping and pulling the paint. I love the different looks. Now the paper is dry here. The water evaporated. And see how it applies differently? Wet, dry. And it'll dry with those lines. So I can go in a little bit and just massage that because watercolors are water soluble so you wet them and you can manipulate them a little bit more. So you can choose what blue you want to use with your design. Now for this one here, we need to let this dry. I can't do any more work. I can continue to manipulate. Now if you're using a bunch of different colors, I would keep the blending to a minimum because you're going to just over blend. But because we're just using blue and black, I can keep playing. And when I'm getting the ripples in the water. And see how I came around this way? I was with the brush this way and see how it lightened it up? Which makes it look like there's a ripple in the water of the, the water pushing off against that leaf. Okay, so let that dry. And when we come back, uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, deepen up those leaves a little bit. We're gonna dampen the leaves now. The water has had chance to dry. Really it's the inside that we need to make sure is damp. I don't want, if I only dampen this part here, then when I apply the darker green, it's going to stop here. I want to have it flow outwards. So it's going to go into the green. A little bit of green. Touch some paper towel and just apply. You can also do this with the pencil if you want. Now this isn't flowing enough, so I'm going to take a little bit of water, my brush, and I'm just going to add a little bit of water, blot the brush. There we go. I can touch into the paint right here. You can see it's very diluted. Add a bit more, add a bit more. So the more you add, the darker it gets, but you're also putting more moisture in there. Now this leaf is drying very quickly because of the studio lights. That's perfect. I'm going to put a little bit more in here. A 
want this very dark. Now you can use the pencil for this. I love that look, that washed out look. You can use the pencil, but I just want to show you different things. Now, if you put the paint on and you leave it like that where it's spotty, on a leaf it looks like the um, there's a the leaf could have like a little um, little bug bite in it or a little hole or a shadow. See? Then you can take your brush with a little bit of water and just feather that out like so. Try not to bring the green to the very end because we want to use that for the highlight. Now see this one applying completely different because this now has dried. We've got to go into the brush, a little bit of water. Take the brush into the water and just wet the leaf. So it's suitable or preferable that you work on these one at a time. Although I'm a big advocate of when you're creating a painting to work on the painting as a whole, not just concentrate on one section. When you're working with watercolors, that's a bit of a different story. Now let's do this. So what happens if you put on way too much pigment like that? Rinse your brush, blot it on paper towel and just roll the brush, rinse it, blot it and just keep picking up the paint. If it hasn't had time to dry, then you'll be all right. Then you can come back in and put it in the way it's supposed to. You will, when learning this, put a bit too much paint or not enough paint or too much water. It's very common. So you don't need to worry. I do it all the time. Sometimes I'm so excited about working on something and I don't pay attention to this one here well as well. It dried out so I'm just a lot of diluted green. I can touch into the cake. Now that because there's not enough moisture in the green cake so I'm just going to add a bit more water to that. I picked up more pigment than anything else. So rinse the brush, blot it, a bit more water. There we go. Easy peasy. And I got a drop in there of some of the dark paint right there. I'm not going to, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm not going to worry about it. There we go. Okay. I'm going to work on the center. While that's the center, while the leaves are drying, I'm going to take the orange pencil and I'm going to just make some lines here. Outline that center. I want my center to be primarily primarily yellow, but I just want to show you. Now we can come in after the fact and go back over everything with graphite again, which is what I showed in the examples. So once we do that, and then we can come in and just use like a little choppy stroke to dissolve the orange. Now I use very little orange. I didn't use a lot. Okay. But I watch what happens with the the wet pencil. Once that pigment gets wet, it goes on very, very dark. So just be careful how much of this you do, like taking your watercolor pencil and going into wet paper. I'm using very little pressure because it gets very dark. Bring that in there. Now I'm going to wet this and you'll see when I use the pencil, look how dark that is. Like so. So just be careful. You come in 
take some of that out, put it someplace else. Okay, I love that. Love that, love, love, love that. Okay, I'm gonna grab some more paper towel and I've got some green in my the other paper towel. And I'm going to I'm going to take the yellow. I'm just gonna move this clean paper towel here and take the yellow. Now you can use the pencil or you can use the watercolor cake. Um, and I'm just going to apply some yellow to the outside. Now I'm doing this and I'm not, you won't be able to see much of a difference. You can apply this and leave it dry or you can wet it to distribute. I'm just brightening up the edges. I said you can use a pencil or you can use the cakes. Completely up to you. I think what I'll do, I probably should have left one, is I'll do this with the pencil and then I'll show you one with the cake. So you can leave it like that or you can come in and all I'm doing is just dampening the outside. So you can't tell very much. Just blending that into paper, but I can take the yellow, okay, on a piece of palette paper. You can even use a little saucer and come in and go over. Now with the watercolor cake, the, the paint is gonna be a little more opaque depending on how much you put on. What I like about the cakes as well is that you can, uh, it, it is transparent, but depending on the layers, it's almost like a transparent acrylic. You can put them on very thickly or very thinly. Okay. We have to wait for that. And let's do Let's, um, I think I want to deepen the leaves a little bit more. Take the green. Actually, let me show you with the pencil. Take this a dark green pencil. And if you dampen the leaf first, let's do this one. Make sure you don't go into any of the pink. If you come in and the pencil will start getting wet you see how it's getting dark? See that? Let's wet this one. And I wet it. Now I'm going to show you where I did wet it. There you go. Okay. Pencils now. Oh, the pencil's wet now. The pigment is just going on really, really well. Now, when you do this, make sure that you let your pencil completely dry before you sharpen it. Because you will clog up your pencil sharpener. Okay. I'm going to dampen this one. So with the pencil, there it is a nice effect. It's a little bit longer. You can use a watercolor pencil as dry. You can, you can even tip them into a little bit of water, just a tippy tip, and come in. Some artists say you shouldn't do that. My feeling is use the tools any way you can, as long as it's not dangerous. And with the watercolor pencils, this is not dangerous. So I, I say have fun with it. Tippy tip. The only thing is you need to make sure that you let them completely dry, the watercolor pencils, before you sharpen them. I have two sets. That way I always have one set sharpened when I need it. There we go. And 
let's see. If we want to deepen up the petals a little bit more, let me take that brush out of the water. Want to deepen up the petals a bit more. We don't have a pink cake, and we can take white and red, but it's easier just to use the pencil. We can take the pencil and just deepen up some of the areas that are in shadow. And you can leave the pencil dry. This one, I'm going to show you a technique on that. You can use the pencil dry or you can wet the paper after. Same thing, we can tip inside the water, come in and look. It, it, this doesn't last long if you just go tip into the water and then apply it to the dry paper. It doesn't go very far. It goes further if you wet the paper first. So let's do this one. You wet the paper first, then come in with the pencil. Because that way the pencil is being, the pigment is being dissolved at the same time. You can even then take your brush and you can dissolve that a little bit more. And then just continue on. When you do this though, well, you're also pushing the pigment directly into the paper, so the color will be much stronger. There we go. See? But you don't have to do that. You can just use the pencil. I'm going to use the other pencil. I'm still damp. And I'm basically under the petals that are underneath another petal darkening those, that edge, leaving the outside edge relatively light. And that does a highlight. Okay. That's going to be all cropped out. Now again, you could make this any color you want. You don't have to do this in pink. Completely up to you. You can also search out different pictures um, of lilies for different colors. Leave a little bit there. Whoops, and I'll show you how to use the white watercolor cake to make some adjustments. That's really nice when you use the cake to lighten up some values. You can make this as dark as you want. As, um, the more pressure you put down, the darker. So look, look, I'm putting more pressure and look how nice and pink that is. Don't forget that the lilies are, are delicate. So when you're putting the color down, the pink is a really nice, soft color to use. And I like the, the variation where it's not one solid color. Okay, let's work with that. So we can turn around now and just dissolve some of that darker color that we put down, the second layer. You don't have to cover the entire petal. Because this is a shadow. So you leave it, you leave the pigment where it's dark and where it's light, you don't add a second layer. See? Just have to fix that. And I'm going to be very careful how close I get to the yellow. 
because I love the shape of what I have right now. Okay. If I want to blend that out a bit more, I'll wet the whole leaf, but I won't bring any of the pigment to the top. That way when the, the pigment will just source out the water naturally, I don't have to push it. That just helps get a really soft edge. So for like this here, I can come out, do the edge first, then paint over the shadow and leave it. Okay, so paint the edge first then come into the shadow and leave it. That way it retains the lightness. I think I forgot to do this one. I did. I forgot to do this one. Uh, I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to let that dry. So that way the, it'll be consistent. And these little ones here are tiny, 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 tiny. And watercolor pencils are great if you want to take them outside to draw with. They're really, really nice. Um, now what I want to do is in the written lesson, I re-outlined the, um, I re-outlined the petals in pink but what I want to do is I want to show you how to do some correction work first so if I take the white cake let me move this over a bit and I really need to when you pick it up the pigment will be it's just it's not it's not uh, diluted it's just wet so just rub it in there and then Put it on the paper really distribute the water to the pigment then you can come now that looks really strong but it becomes transparent as it dries and it applies a beautiful dusting right on top of the the petal and I'm applying this wet paint on top of dry paper just to the outside and this is helpful when, like for this piece here, it would take me quite a few layers, but I can eventually get to cover up that green where I the green touched into the petal. Now, when you first put this on, the white is going to blend in with the pink of the petal because watercolors are water soluble after it dries and you apply another layer your, your petals become a little bit more opaque I love that look that soft look just make sure that you watch how much water evaporates out of that mixture you put there you'll just have to tap into a little bit more water as you go okay let's take a little bit more This just adds a little bit of an extra. Otherwise, you can use the pencil for this. Now, I could cover that up. It would take me quite a few layers. Um, I don't think it's necessary, though. And if you use, like, the really dark blue, uh, the very, very dark blue pencil, sometimes you won't be able to erase any of that stuff. done so this is just a way to show you correction and then when this dries you can apply another layer and you can do this as many times as you want and not just with the white you can do with with any color it helps even out some of the tones see here I can just, just dissolve that okay 
but you can also leave it variegated like that. You don't have to apply the white. I just want to show you what it looks like. I can use it to tidy up that rough diluted look. There we go. You can also apply that over the green. I don't want to apply it over the green because I like the, the vibrancy of the green. But you can do that. Now, once that's dry, then we can take the pencil and go over it if necessary. Um, the other thing that we can do, we can take the green pencil. And if you had to tidy up some of the edges, you can fill in some spots. Um, if you had little parts that weren't colored in all the way. You can tidy up the edges. Oops. Too much pressure and I, I always break the pigment. Pigment stick. And just go along the outside. You can use the dark green or the light green. Make sure your petals are completely dry before you do this. See here, I got a little bit of green inside the petal. Now I can take my pink and push that. You see how dark that is? You get a little mark in there. So just make sure everything is, is dry. And from here, I mean, you can darken it up some more if you want to. Um, just to show you, you can take the red. Not necessary though. You can take a little bit of red, very light pressure, then take your water, and you can really punch up that shadow inside each leaf, in the petal I should say. Now here, that's dry, very little pressure. Using very, very little pressure. If you use too much, you're going to get a lot of red on there. And that red is very powerful. Make sure you go in clean water. Now don't forget, we also have the white that was there already. Okay, so you can deepen up the petals with that. Um, why don't we go over the outlines of the petals? Now, this is optional. You don't have to. You can do it with a pencil. I, for these two, I use a graphite pencil to outline the petals. You can always use your pink pencil. Make sure everything's dry. And the pink pencil, what it does, it just gives it an outline. Like I said, you don't have to do this. Okay. You can outline it with the pink pencil. You can also outline it with the graphite. And the graphite would just make that effect stronger. See? And where, when you do this, it's helpful if you've lost some of the shapes that you were coloring in. Okay, it just helps define the shape's a little bit better. Especially where the petals overlap. Okay, just find, just find more shadow. Can make this a little bit darker. These are all kind of hidden underneath.
Now this one here, it got a little bit lost, so I can take my pencil, my graphite pencil, and very lightly. Now once I do this, I'm not going to apply any water to it. Okay, just apply the, the bit of the graphite. And I think this is actually one leaf. I just made them into two. Same with here, that got a little bit lost. Very lightly. And the center, the center of this one is not as dark as this one. You can turn around and make it as dark as you want. The other thing you can do with is really cool is if you take the white the white pigment, a little bit of water, and then tap, tap that over to get a few spots. There we go. And you'll get a look like that. So there we go. That's about all that's involved with this piece. Now again, like I said, you can turn around and you can make the center as dark as you want, but I want to give you um, as many different options as possible. And all that would be left with this is for you to crop it down to a size that you like. For this particular uh, painting, I used this reference photograph for the koi and came up with this cute little painting here. And I'm going to demonstrate how we're going to use a lot of the white from the watercolor cakes to really lighten up the value here. Now, although this is the photograph, we're not going to copy the photograph. We're going to use our artistic license to create some really neat effects with water and to make something our own. Now, this is the full version of for the full uh, painting. I like to paint the, with my watercolors larger than normal and then I cut it down because it has to be framed behind glass because it's water soluble. So you don't want it to get wet and ruined. So I always paint it larger than normal and then I cut it down so the edges are nice and finished. So I'm going to leave this right here and hope it doesn't get wet. But I like to try to keep my water away from what I'm, what I'm working on. And I transferred the sketch onto the paper. And the first thing we're going to do with sharpened pencils, we're going to work with the light blue and we're going to color in all the blue areas. So just going to paint that in like, color that in like this, medium pressure, not too hard. It all depends on um, how sharp your pencil is. Now I'm leaving the graphite lines in. They will eventually dissolve, but uh, sometimes it's nice when they show through to add definition. Do you see how I'm pressing on that? And the harder you press, the more pigment you're going to get, but it's better if you just do it in layers if possible. I'm going to bring that over here. I want to make sure that you can see the, pa the painting at the same time so you can see exactly what I'm working on. Now the sketch that I provided has some circles and dots where the, the black marks. You don't have to do these, transfer these as part of the sketch. And as well, I'm going to change the design just to show you how flexible it is. Uh, what else do we have? We have this over here. And now the gills. I'm going to color, I'm going to actually outline the gills first so I don't lose them. And then this part here. I'm going to outline this. Just, I just don't want to lose the lines. Like that. Okay. Uh, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Right in here. And I'm going to show you how flexible it is to basically add the spots. You can go right over the spots if you want because we're going to be adding black after. And I'm going to attempt to make this koi 
much more vibrant than the one in this one here. This will show you the intensity of the, the pigments. Oh, you know what? Let's just go for it. Let's just cover everything up. That way you don't have to fuss. Just don't want to lose the lines though. That's why I'm outlining these. Oh, while we're here, let's go around this one. This is important because this is the eye. I outlined in blue, but you didn't have to. I just want to make sure I don't lose any of this because we can always cover it up with black. So we need to go around this here. There we go. And we'll just cover up that spot. Now, as we move forward, let's lighten up the pressure a little bit because this is primarily light light white go around very light you can actually even omit that but I want to show you how to use the white watercolor cake okay so that's what you have and let's as well let's color in Let's outline this here. And even these lines, you don't really even have to transfer them with graphite. If with the graphite, you have to make sure that you transfer your lines very light. Otherwise, the graphite is going to dissolve and everything's going to look gray. Okay. add a little bit of color in there. Let's just add a little bit of color in here. This is very light here, almost transparent. I am going to veer off from the written lesson a little bit so I can show you more techniques. And let's do this one up here. This is where um, the fin goes, but the actual finished piece gets cropped way down here but that's where well, we can use this for some practice let's color that in like so just go to the edge of the graphite lines and where does that go that's the tail the fin right about here let's work with that so we'll work we'll use that for practice and I think that's pretty well pretty well covers that off. I think we're we're good to go. And get your little brush. Not the graphite pencil, little brush. I'm gonna dampen it in some water. And now to dissolve it, let's practice up here first. All you're doing is just adding the water. Touch the brush and paper towel. Like this. Same way as we worked through the lily. Nothing's changed. Except with the fishy, with the koi, the fins are going to be very, very transparent like that. That's absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So you're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take that paint and we're going to bring it up. There's actually a line. I'm going to take my orange pencil. There's a line here right there. That's where his tail is. And you know what I missed? I just noticed it. I missed his body line. So we will take that and go right there. Yeah, close to about here. There we go. I totally missed that. But that's okay. Do you see how transparent that is. Now same thing down here. With this light blue pencil it's very intense. That's why you don't use a lot. And then when you do the wash look how it dissolves. So when I drew over these lines they're staying because I use pressure and then everywhere else where I colored in very lightly it's 
not washed out, but it's, it's just very transparent. Now, when we do this part here, making sure that the brush is facing the outside so we get a nice crisp edge. And I'm working the brush following the, the, the roundness of the koi. Now I would like to say you can paint the koi in any colors you want because it's very flexible. So I would say, you know what, use your artistic license, paint one red, paint one purple, paint them all different colors just so you can pr get practice. It's a lot of fun. You can make the fish very, very vibrant. So be very careful around the eye. We do not want any of that blue in there. I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to work light now into dark. Bring some of that blue in there. And this is one a design that's so forgiving because if you happen to make the colors uh, the colors the wrong wrong direction like the wrong shape whatever it doesn't matter it's like a calico and a cat the colors are really can go anywhere now we have to let this dry but what we can do is we can use the orange pencil while we're waiting and now I'm not in the studio where studio light, so everything is drying very, very quickly. The only thing that's wet right now is this, so I can go ahead and color this in. So that when I color the body, and when I color the body, I'm not going to do the tail because the tail is transparent. I'm going to kind of make the edges jagged here. If you create a hard line, like when you color and it's a hard line ending like this, you won't be able to blend any of this color into here. So if I create it jagged like this, it'll look more natural. So I'm going to color that in. Now I'm going to try, like I said, I'm going to try to make this as much more vibrant. So I'm going to use a little bit more pressure. Make sure though you at home that the blue is 100% dry before you add in the orange because now this is beyond the scope of um, I'm going to color right over the spots. This is beyond the scope of this project, but for color, color mixing, orange and blue next to each other look great. Mixed together, they darken and dull down um, each of their own colors so that you get a really, really dull, dull color. And this here, the, the graphite line, I can't see the graphite line very well here, so I'm going to put that in there. You can color around those black spots. I'm going to color right over them just to show you how flexible this is. And we don't want a perfectly smooth finish. That's why I'm kind of being a bit rough with this because the scales. The koi has scales and I'm going to change the design up a little bit here. I'm gonna, this is primarily, there's some gray in here. I'm going to add some orange just to change this up. Be very careful that I make sure I, where they're going to blend. I'm going to make sure that there is some gray in here. Because when orange and blue mix together, it doesn't look very good. But in saying that, this is being cropped anyway, so it doesn't matter. But you may like the whole thing the way it is. If you want to go around the spots, that's fine. I'm going to get a different pencil that's already been sharpened. If you want to go around the spots, that's fine. I'm using a bit more firm pressure. Not using light pressure. I really want to make this bright. So in the written lesson, um, the pressure was a little bit lighter than what I'm doing now. But I would strongly suggest that you create a couple of different versions of this. 
practice in an art journal. These are very convenient if you want to draw outside. If you want to create, um, you can do your drawing with this. And all you need is one brush, one brush and a little container of water. The pigment on this is very strong, so we're gonna we'll get a nice a nice finish on this. And we'll bring that right into here. And I'm not worried about the orange touching the blue here because we're outlining this part here with, with black. And the eye, we're going to, the eye is, goes like this. Same thing with the color of the eyes, you can really vary that. While we're here, take the black watercolor pencil, just so I don't lose it. Now this is where I'm veering off from the written lesson. Whoops, I used too much pressure. I'm just gonna mark that in there. And then there's a little, you want a slight little outline of blue around there. I'm putting that in now just so I don't, I like doing the eyes first because then you, the, that way the fish is kind of looking at you and you're not, it's not blah. <laughs> I am veering off just a little bit. I'm also adjusting things as I see. Bring that right around. That's how flexible this is. Because we can come in too, and we are gonna have to, to strengthen up the black with the watercolor cakes. There we go. That does not look much better. And there's a little now again, like I said, I am veering off a little bit now. I'm kind of combining two two uh, lessons here in one, where in the written lesson we wet this first, then we do the spots. But might as well do everything now. Bring this down here, and then down here, down this way, this here. Okay. So I think we're good to go right now just the way it is. So let's put the black pencil away and let's start back here. So we're gonna be working on this section here. I'm gonna move this so it doesn't get wet. And I'm only gonna make one stroke. Down here is fine, I can come in like this, but then when I swoop it up, slowly lift the brush off. And it creates that nice watery thing. If I keep rubbing over and over and over again, it is going to turn into mud. Okay, let's come down here and swoop that over and let go. Slowly swoop that over. And then just bring some of that color together. See? And now for the back of the body, you can, you can tell where I put used a bit more pressure. Look how vibrant that color is. And I'm making this raggedy. I don't want a perfect, perfect finish. Don't forget that the koi is actually in water, so you're not going to have a perfectly smooth, perfectly smooth finish. And now for the tail, I'm going to bring some of that color out here. Makes it look more, more, more soft. It makes it look a little bit softer. Then zigzag the 
Koi has some scales. And I'm going to use the opportunity to come back and put more pigment up here just so I can show you how you can see the difference. I'm going to show you how you can just darken this up a little bit more. And then in here, see, look at that, look how vibrant that is. Oh, wow. Very slowly when going next to blue. Anything that's opposite on the color wheel, be very careful when you're next, especially with wet paint. When you're wa working with acrylics, you can let it dry, then apply the color next to it. But when it's wet paint, you have to be very careful so you don't get mud. Yellows next to greens, that's fine. But colors that are opposite in the color wheel, no. You got to be careful. We don't want mud. Now I'm going to paint in the orange and we're going to wait for that to dry before we touch the black. I can though wet the orange in here and I can wet the black right here just a little bit. It's insignificant um, what uh, for this here because it's such a small, small area. And I have to wait for this to dry before I can do anything. What I can do though is I can add the spots to the blue while, because that is dry. So you're going to take your black pencil and make sure that blue's dry. Yeah, blue's dry. Then you're going to add some lines. You can do this freestyle. I want to put a little dot here. You can do this freestyle with paint, the black cake, or you can do it with the pencil. And I'm looking and I don't really see my graphite line, so I'm just going to wing it. Okay. I do want to show you, though, how to do it just with the cake and not use the pencil just so you can see the difference. So if I did that, and let's get a bit of a close up here. If I take the water, now if the black goes into the blue, it's no big deal. Because the black will basically overwrite the blue. Okay, so this is the, just a little bit of water into the spots drawn in with the black watercolor pencil. Okay, you with me so far? But you can take the black and the watercolor cake, which is when which I wet from the previous lesson. Okay. And you can apply it dry. So if I come in here and I can, so we're not going to wet the paper first because these are all shapes that we have to draw or color in. So I can use my brush to create the shapes that I want. Freestyle. Okay. Is the orange, oh, the orange is still wet over there, but it's dry over here. So I can take the paint, always distribute on the paper because when you wet, when you wet the cake, the water's just sitting there and it's actually the pigments aren't really mixed in with the water. You have to blend it. Then you can dilute it a little bit more. I never ever recommend you paint with your palette this close to your painting because you will splash. I did splash one spot in the previous lesson. so. Just be careful. I can come in and freestyle. Touch, push, lift to get a little different shape. I can go like that. 
that. I mean, you can really create some nice, interesting, just by the pressure of the brush. Don't make them all the same though. Okay. See how beautiful that is over here. Let's put a little one there, one here, a little teardrop, and a little one here. That's, you know what? Those are too close to be the same. There we go. And I'm tilting the paper so I can see where it's, where it's wet. And you notice I'm not going over the area over and over because it will eventually dissolve the orange and it would lighten up the black. So make your mark and leave it. That looks like a little duck. Isn't that cute? <laughs> that looks like a little duck. There's another little duck right there. I'm going to leave that in there. A little story. A little story for the koi. The koi and the duck. That'll be my story. Let's put another one here. So see how flexible that is? You can make some... Now see here with the pencil, it's not as dark as this. So we can come back over and touch that up where the pencil was. The pencil has binders, which is the glue that holds the pencil together. And so with the pigment, which is pure. And now we can come back in with the eye and really, really darken that up. Come back in now and just very carefully detail the eye. Now the eye very slowly. I honestly I tell my students do the eye first because then if you happen to make a mistake that can't be corrected you start all over again but the eye if you do the whole painting first and you don't do the eye properly then this the painting's just not going to look right um so, now I didn't add, don't want to add anything in here because I want to do a little bit more with the orange but if I take the black really diluted really really dilute that and just create a little light spots in here. The little gray spots, those will dry uh, dry out gray. And take a little bit of that black. And really what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of gray here. That'll dry out like that. And then one right here. Feather that out. Alrighty. Okay, that takes care of that. Now, uh, let's let's work on this up here. See how the difference between the orange, how vibrant this is, and how unvibrant that is. We can take the orange in the cake. You have to make sure you really rinse your brush because. I got, I got a little bit of black in there. I can turn around with the orange and the cake and basically add some more orange in there and be done with it. Okay. The better way, I'm just going to pad this off now. And you can still do that. There's nothing wrong with it, but you can take your pen, your, your brush and you can wet this. Okay. And take the orange pencil and you can take the orange pencil and you can make some lines where in this one here, we use the black pencil for these lines. We can use the orange to create the, the lines. Okay. Then come back with the, the brush and we can just soften that up 
making sure you don't overwork this area here. Careful when you go over the black. Okay, you can do that. The other thing you can do is you take your brush and dampen the tip of the pencil, which will load that pigment, and then you can put that in here. There we go. So you can do it two ways. Okay. So that takes care of that. So we've got the eye done and let's see. I want to show you how to, oh, you know what? We need to do the fin here. Now this is where I'm veering off a little bit from the design. Um, I want to create, um, I want to create this as a, a much lighter blue and we'll do that with the watercolor cakes. I'm going to use some of the white. I'm going to touch a bit into the blue. Look, see the blue's getting contaminated now. That's fine. Speck into black. Okay, and now a lot of water. And I just want to create the indication that there is another fin there. And the reason why I'm not determining the color very strongly is because when we put the water in there, depending on what color the wa water ends up taking shape, then we'll take that color and we'll put a little bit of that in here. I just wanted to find the shape so I didn't lose it. The water is a lot of fun to do. Uh, it does take quite a bit of time to dry, um, but we need to basically wet the whole piece. We, we use a watercolor cake to put the water on and then we're going to do some tilting. I need to wait for that to dry first. So we'll come back in a couple of minutes and then we'll continue on. Alrighty, so let's work on the back. Now this technique I'm going to show you, um, there, it, it's very unpredictable, but it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to bring the colors down here just a little bit more. And now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got eight lights on, so when I, if I were to wet the entire paper, it's going to dry very, very quickly, and because I'm, I'm using a small brush, I'm going to go for time saving to a larger brush. And what I want to do is I want to show you first how we're going to work this. You wet the entire painting. The, the water area. Okay. We're going to wet it very, very well, especially around the outside edges. So that's where we can really do some practice. When you're going next to the fish, be very, very careful. If you happen to touch the wet brush into any of the fish, let it dry completely and then start all over again. You do not want to get any water into the fish. That's what we're going to do next. Now your paper at this point as well might start buckling a little bit. That's because the paper is absorbing the water. So we're just going to do the outside first. And if you take some of the green and you touch it, you have to work fast. Make sure the paper is really, really saturated. And then take some of the blue. Take some of the light blue. The paper's already starting to dry here. So if it's starting to dry, take the brush. Your paper has to be wet. Try not to over mix the colors though. And take some green. And 
need to wet that a little bit. So you're going to apply, so you're going to wet the paper, apply the paint, apply more water. Let's take some blue. bit more water and while you're doing this the paint is drying a little bit make sure that your paper stays wet all the time I'm going to take the big brush just to save some time These studio lights here, everything dries so quickly. Whoops. Way too much pigment there. There we go. Okay, with the paper all wet now, you're going to take it very, and watch so you to make sure none of the paint goes into the fish. If you didn't touch any of the fish, the paint will go right around it. And when you do this, look at that marks happening in the paper. Now see I've got a bead of paint there. I can take the paper, bend it back. You can do this as many times as you want. You can also just dot some additional color in there. Don't do the three like the way I did. Mix that up because it looks like a pattern. I really like the green with this. The light blue is nice too. And once you get a pattern that you like, you're going to let your paint dry. And let's touch this up a little bit. Okay, I like what I've got here. I'm just going to kind of touch that up where there's no, the paper dried. Okay. So I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to come in here and right in there. This you're going to do by hand. in there and in here. Again, use the brush that you have. I'm doing this just for time saving. And I'm not gonna, well, I can do this part a little bit. It's okay if some of the paint comes in to that. Um, we're, let's stick with a dark blue. So take the dark blue Take a little speck of black, a lot of water, a little bit more black than that. Because back here, there's not a lot of shading, or sorry, not a lot, not a lot of light. That's a perfect blue very dull, dull blue. Blue next to orange looks amazing. But if we made this too intense, it's going to compete with the vibrancy of the fish. We'll take a little bit of that blue, put that in here, pick up a little bit of the green, just a little bit. Like that. Take a little bit of the green, little bit. So I'm kind of dotting that in. There we go. So see how that's drying out? As it's drying, it's starting to, the pigment's starting to speckle and it's drying with some really cool and funky shapes. You can, once you let it dry like this, you can do this step over again, but just when you're wetting the paper, if you want to apply another layer of this type of color, just wet the paper 
like with one swoop, if you keep working, wetting and wetting and wetting, you're eventually going to dissolve everything that's here. Okay. And the more you do this, the more the colors are going to blend together. But I like that. See, as it starts to dry, you get some really interesting shapes. Now you can also speed up the drying time with a heat gun or a hair dryer. So I'm just going to just give you a demonstration on how to do that. So I'm standing up now. So my arms are at this distance and I've got my heat gun. Now a heat gun is used for embossing. Um, I use it to dry, um, speed up the drying time. With a heat gun, it's low air, a low air pressure, but very high heat. A hair dryer is high air pressure and you can have a low heat setting. When you're, when you've done this technique here, you can use your hair blower or heat gun to actually manipulate where the paint goes. And I'm going to show you that's going to be a bit noisy. But you have to be careful though, because the heat gun is very hot, you don't want to burn your paper. A hair dryer, the air force, put it on low so the air force isn't as strong. But as you start doing this, it's going to dry with these really cool little, little lines. I can still manipulate some of the water, whatever is left over. Do I have anything left? No, that's pretty well dry. That's not going anywhere. Let me just quickly dry that again. You can see where it's drying. It's nice pattern lines. See all the patterns that that's that's just gorgeous. So now what we can do is we can take this opportunity to you can either intensify the background, but I don't want the background to be competing with the fish. Um, you can see here very different look. I love this, and the fish though, in the lesson we're working on is much more intense than this one here. So play with the colors the way you want. What I want to show you is if we use white to blend out the front because he's the fish is lit up it's very very light here you have to make sure that the background watercolor is dry just take the white on the dry paper make sure you don't touch any of the black and you can just make some touch-ups like this If you touch into the black, your your resulting color is going to be gray. Okay, and you've got that. I can come in now with additional blue. Where's my blue? If I want to make the blue stronger, I can come in and add another layer of blue. You don't have to wet it. You can leave it just the way it is. See how much stronger that is? And back here, you can do the same thing. And I'm using little circle strokes now to make sure that all the pores are covered. Now th this, I do this for second layers. I like doing it this way. Um, because I can then decide if I want to add some water to it. That's not dry yet. And I'm not using very firm pressure. Okay, and I can choose, do I want to Do I want to add water to this or not, or do I want to leave it? I can turn around in here, make it a little bit darker. I can go right over the, the black 
you just want to make sure that you don't go over black that's wet. Okay. I think I want to intensify this a little bit more. A bit firmer pressure right over the black. When you're working around black, the black itself is not the problem of being ruined. What happens is that if the black spreads into the blue, you're going to have a, a larger spot to cover. And I'm going to show you how to fix that up. Okay, so see how much more vibrant that is? Let's at the same time color this in a little bit more. I'm going to a light layer over that and a light layer over this. Just want to make it a little bit more blue. We'll leave this. And so I'm going to paint this in first because this, once we do this, we don't have to come back to it. Just to dissolve the color a little bit, make sure that you leave the striations there, all these little lines, because that's for the fin. Same thing with this one here. Okay, take whatever's left over in the brush and come in with this one. So I'm going to now take my wet brush and I'm going to come in and I'm going to come in and paint over the blue. Uh oh, I touched into the black. We'll see what happens. Come in. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you know that I do not edit mistakes out because I want you to see how I fix the problem. Very rarely do is there a mistake that I make to the point where I have to throw the piece out. But I want to show you how to fix a boo-boo. Well, what help if that boo-boo did what it was supposed to? The boo-boo didn't boo-boo. So let's go, oh, okay, oh, I, I touched into the black. What do I do? Okay, well, we'll just continue on. We'll pretend that the water just kind of smeared around and we went and had a cup of tea and we didn't know what happened till we got back. Come around, we'll just continue on. Continue on. I'm going to leave this fairly dissolved. It's going to add some water, soften that out. So you can see where it's all all smeared out. I can turn around with the brush and attempt to dissolve that right into into the background. So wet the brush, pick it up, blot it in the paper towel. Every time my brush leaves the camera view, I'm blotting it on a little piece of paper towel. And eventually what will happen is that you'll lift up as much color as you could. The other thing you can do is work it into the design. Because of this, the fish, it's so, so flexible, I could turn around and take the colored pencil and go back over, or I can take the watercolor cake and add a bit more blue and work that into it. Depending on the strength of the blue that you're adding, I would myself cover the whole thing. That way the blue is consistent. Remember this, these little striations that we're putting here, they're fine. Okay. You can then use a heat gun to dry it. But what you can also do is once this is dry, take your black paint and you can make that spot a little bit bigger, which is what I'm going to do. So while that's drying, I'm going to go here, pick up some white. I just want to make this a little bit stronger. And we're going to detail the mouth. Now the mouth in the actual written lesson I detailed with the blue pencil. And you can do that. that that's fine. I'm going to come in with the black pencil though. Just make this a little bit stronger. Okay. And that's almost dry. And I can come in with 
with, with, with the light blue pencil. Where did it go? And just touch up the edges. I'm just going to touch up the edges. This is wet here. So I can, I can use, like I did show in the lily, I can use the pencil, the watercolor pencil on wet paper. See how dark that is? The pigment is really coming off nicely. Okay, you can add little striations in there. Remember, this is covered in scales. It's not perfectly smooth. And I can turn around, just add a little bit more color here, like so. The pencil is pretty well dull now. So it'll give me a, a smoother finish. I don't want a those, I don't want heavy lines like this. I'm going to deepen that up a little bit. And yeah, we're looking pretty good there. We're going to add some blue in here. Just dissolve a little bit of this. Make sure you use clean water. Try not to overwork this fin here because this does have some black in it. There we go. And I'm going to take the blue pencil and I'm just going to outline the koi. Where's the photograph? Just going to outline the koi just a little bit. Lightly cover color inside his mouth. His mouth is open. And then take the brush, clean water and just color inside little bit of shading. Okay. I'm going to take, go into our black. Now see how we went over that these spots are not as dark as the other ones. You can come back over and if the spot changes shapes, changes its shape, no big deal. So this helps when you've applied the color and then you've gone over with another colored pencil because the colored pencil will tone down the black. It won't completely cover it, but it'll reduce how strong the color is. Okay. And see these ones back here, they're a little bit gray. This one here, because it's going over two different colors, I'm just going to bring that out here and then just lightly fade that in like so. Okay. The final thing I want to do is I want to blend this color. It's a little bit better. I see a white line around there. And you can let that dry first. You may not have to do this. See, I didn't rinse my brush and I still have black in my, my brush. And it's too late. The black just gone right in. So that's fine. I'm going to work it in. There we go. And this actually gets cut off right about here. I never frame to an edge because you've got the paper curling and sometimes where you've picked up the paper and your fingerprint gets there. I like to cut it in usually between a quarter to a half an inch. Could take some of the the light blue from the watercolor cake 
and just add a little bit of extra color in here. Okay, so there we go. So that was a fairly, fairly easy one to work with. And then you can continue to build up the white if you want. You don't have to. But though this is a good way to, to practice overlapping colors. It teaches you control because you cannot touch the white or the black. Don't go over the black, otherwise you're going to smear all that color. You can also, if you want, take some of the white and apply it to the background. I'm not going to. I like the all the striations. Now, if you have a coarse salt, when the when the water, this area here, is all wet, you can throw in some coarse salt and let the whole piece dry. And where the salt, coarse salt was hitting, you'll have little blooms of color. But that's something that you can try as well. Don't sign your painting until you've done the crop. Then once you've done the crop, you can sign it. Um, I'm going to use a blue pencil. So I'm going to pretend that I'm going to crop it right about there. And I'll just sign it. Oops, too much pressure. There we go. So we're all done. Did you have fun? I hope so. Now the only way to improve your skills is to practice, practice, practice. And to help you with that, I'd like to invite you to visit my website at myloveaffairwithlife.com. And what you'll find on there is a variety of things that are for creative inspirations, free tutorials, free videos, full classes and workshops that you can try, different mediums, a whole bunch of different things. Um, and basically, if you on that website, you will never be bored because there's always something to do. All right. So I'd like to invite you to check that out. And I really hope that you will push along and practice the skills that you've learned so far. Visit the website, get a whole bunch of different uh, other information to help you along. And I would love to get your feedback. And on the website, you can sign up for my newsletter. I announce different projects that are free tutorials and stuff like that. And I would love to see the, the artwork that you've created in today's workshop. So until then, stay inspired and I will see you next time.